Good evening, everybody. I'm really, really excited um, to have Margaret here tonight. Um, she has done a lot of really exciting work in the fields of both filmmaking and photography. Um, she's traveled all over the world um, on a variety of different types of projects, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, her work has appeared in galleries. Um, she has done wedding videos and photography. She has um, followed... And I don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but she is a great example about how to build a career um, doing a variety of different kinds of work, both for yourself and work for others. And um, she teaches. Um, she is an amazing um, videographer, um, cinematographer, filmmaker, director, um, a great person in general. Um, her personal work um, focuses on issues of social justice. Um, she makes amazing films look like photography and amazing photographs that have um, a cinemagraphic feel to them, um, which you'll see when you see her work tonight. Um, she is a recipient of a grant from the MacArthur Foundation. Um, she is a recipient of a grant from, what is it, the one, what's the name of it, the one, world? Oh, One Economy. One Economy, um, in particular for her amazing film, um, Raising Bertie, which is currently in production, May 2nd. Um, some of the stuff she's gonna talk to you tonight, she's gonna be talking to people at the Gene Siskel Film Center about um, she is um, amazing. And here she is. Thank you for having me. Is this is the screen up? It is. Oh, great. Okay. So I I used your bathroom and I saw a little sheet. What did it say? The things to think about not to make you depressed as an artist. And I I know it talked about uh, the the one comment it said was think about what you want to make and not just for money and and the thing that I have to say is you got to make a living and if you don't want to be a um, barista or a waitress or a waiter or you know you got to figure out how do I make a living and make my art so I graduated from UIC in 2000 so I've been working ever since I've never had a job except for uh, teaching, which I started about a year and a half ago. It was the first time somebody asked me if I, if, you know, it was the first time I needed a bachelor's degree. Not to say that education isn't important, it's very important. <laughs> but, um, so I wanna start off by showing you a couple of my websites. I have, um, this is my film website. It's my independent film company that uh, is in its 10th year now. It's my 10 year anniversary of producing films. Um, I spent 10 years in New York after I graduated. Uh, so I think that has been a big influence on me. I also lived in Nigeria for a year, was producing um, videos there, and uh, have tra have, I've traveled a lot with my work, so I think that's been an important uh, influence and perspective building experience, especially for my work. Um, so this is Betty Films, and this is my logo, and I like to say that this is, have you guys seen that um, Horton Here's a Who, where he has the little, uh, the whole world lives on, a, on one little speck? I like to think that that's that speck, but, but it's really about making small people that don't have a voice and giving them a voice, and that's kind of what my company is about. So. If you read it, everybody has a story. Show a people as one thing and that is what they become. Which, I chose this photograph, I shot this in Mali. I worked on a film um, which is called Music in Mali, but it's also about how the war, I don't know if you know about what's been going on in Mali, that the country was divided and um, I was there when the president was overthrown last year. Um, so all the musicians had to flee to the south and leave their, their families, their homes, their belongings, because uh, Sharia law came in and music was not allowed, not even a ringtone on your phone, you could get your hand cut off. Um, so these are things that are still happening, but um, I say show people as one thing and that is what they become, because I think 
this is sort of an image of what you think of Africa. And I've always been interested about creating a larger image of Africa that's not just one story. This is a photo I took in Nigeria. Um, I was actually on the, a bus with Ludacris. I don't know if you know the rapper. And I'd gone to, um, my introduction to Africa was, I'd gone to Africa, to Nigeria, Ni Nigeria, to Lagos, to launch MTV. So that launched in 2005. So we did all these different uh, concerts that we filmed around Africa in different countries, Kenya, South Africa, all these places. And um, so they were fighting, they, I mean, this is actually them fighting over, they wanna, you know, get an autograph or, but of course these guys were too afraid to open a window. Um, but that was sort of my introduction to Africa. The single story creates stereotypes and the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but they are incomplete. And, um, you know, I spent a year in Nigeria living there, and I think uh, a lot of people, especially, I mean, really anywhere you talk about Nigerians, they're stereotyped as fraudulent, as, you know, corrupt, and all those things are true, but there's many other stories. Um, so I think that that's the point I'm trying to make. My daughter is right here. She's half Nigerian. Um, and I always say she's going to be an ambassador for peace to Nigeria. Uh, this is a picture of Mary J. Blige, if you guys are familiar. I've worked with her for over a decade, shooting live videos, live concerts. It's how I made my living in New York. Um, and the way that I got to work with her is that I worked for free. And that's one thing to think about. Um, you know, there's different there's different ways to to go about it. You can you can get an internship. You can be a PA. You know, you can get a job at a gallery. How many here are? What are your um, majors? What are what are you focusing on creatively? Design. Uh, design. Are there any photographers here? Any filmmakers? Great. And what do you what do you want to do in film? Do you know yet? I want to make documentaries. You want to make documentaries. You want to make documentaries too. What what um, motivates you to do that? Um, you know, there's not a lot of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I just I grew up in a very poverty stricken area, and I wanted to contribute to that. Um, and I just think that that's what I'm Mhm. That's great. What about you? Kind of the same as that, but also. You know, I think the greatest thing about making documentaries is it gives you a license to live in another world that you would never live in and meet people that you'd never meet. And really those people, I work on films that span a very long time. So the characters in my film become like my family. So um, I think that that's probably the greatest part of making films. Uh, many stories matter. They can be used to empower and humanize. This is something I shot in Tokyo. I just, it's a photo I, I like. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. Which is, this image right here is from, is a portrait I took in Bertie, which is the film that I'm working on now, which I started in 2009. I'm in post-production with Kartemquin. Has anybody heard of Kartemquin? Kartemquin, especially for those of you that are interested in documentary, um, and even design, um, web design, uh, like filmmakers need other creative people. I have a designer making my poster right now. I have um, a web, another person working on my website. Um, so. Everybody works together. A film is not made by one person. Um, and then this quote is by Chimamanda Ngoza Adichie, which is a Nigerian writer who is probably my favorite writer. Um, 
and this is sort of the log line for my company, which is we are an independent film company that specializes in visually rich, socially minded content. Another thing about documentary, and there was just an article. You guys should all follow me on Facebook. I post a lot of articles about creative things, about film, about grants, about you know uh, different things that are going on in Chicago. Uh, but you can connect with me here. Um, so in production, this is the film that I'm working on, Raising Bertie. Can you explain what grants are too? What, what? Oh, grants. A grant is when you get money to do your work. So um, the MacArthur Foundation is, uh, I love them. They, they gave me my first major grant. They gave me $120,000 last year um, and to make my film. And then what I did is I partnered with Cartemquin, which is a um, nonprofit that makes socially minded films that has been around for 45 years. So they have a lot of relationships. Has anybody here seen Hoop Dreams? Everybody here should see Hoop Dreams. It was made in 1994. It just had its 20th anniversary premiere at Sundance, um, made by Steve James, who's really probably one of the most famous documentary filmmakers, not only in Chicago, but in the country. Um, and he is actually, I, before I forget to mention it, on May 2nd, I'm going to be showing um, work in progress screening of the film. I'm actually going to show you some something today, which is a demo, so you can understand a little bit more about, you know, whatever your work is, there's grants out there for you to apply it for. And um, learning how to write proposals, learning how to, um, show samples of your work and what people are looking for and write, writing grants for specific organizations and what they're looking for. You know, you kind of have to, you have to shape things for your funders and then you go make the project you want to make, which is what I've learned, you know. So, um, but on May 2nd at the Gene Siskel, you got to buy tickets in advance. I think it's just $10, but it always sells out. Uh, Steve James will be there with his next film. I'll be there with Raising Bertie. And then there's going to be, um, they're showing Hard Earned, which is an up and coming, it's a six hour series that's on Al Jazeera America, um, which is also an interesting, uh, it's an interesting station that uh, Al Jazeera came here about two years ago and bought Current TV. Um, but they, what's interesting about what they're doing with news is that they're focusing on middle America. So they're telling stories primarily in middle America, which is an underreported part of the country. Um, so getting back to this, Raising Bertie, um, I really liked this Bible verse because I think that it speaks to what the young men, um, what the movie is about. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. So it's about these three young men growing into adulthood in a community where there's very little resources, there's very low expectations, um, and the challenges that they face. It starts at an alternative school. And um, another thing that you need to think about when you're making a documentary, you may set out to make one thing, <laughs> and then it becomes another thing and then you don't know what it is. And so you're always trying to figure it out, you know. Um, but what I, uh, what I set out to do was follow this alternative school for at-risk boys in rural North Carolina for one year. When I started filming, the school shut down. And so I was like, what am I gonna do now, you know? And I had some seed money, I had $20,000 in seed money. Um, thinking back on it now, I would have used it better. I was, uh, you know, renting equipment, thinking that I'd, they'd keep funding me, and I would have just kept things smaller, which is really what you'll see in the, um, in the demo is, if you're familiar, photographers, I'm sure, the Canon 5D, uh, I shot mo most of this film with the um, Canon 5D Mark II. So you can do things for a little amount of money. I think it's when you get to the point where you want to where you want to open it up so that it's not just you making the project, but you need other people's help. Like, it's hard to be a director and a producer and a shooter and an editor because 
it it's all you know you need another perspective and I think that's very important in film I think it's very important when you make anything is um, testing out the water see what people think see see how your work affects people um, I love this picture because it's really what Bertie is about it's Bertie has youth and they have old the older generation and the new generation and and I think the 20 to 40 range 20 to 50 range there aren't a lot of uh, there aren't a lot of that age group in the community because it's a rural community there aren't a lot of jobs so people either they go to school and they leave or they get jobs and they leave which is happening I think a lot in rural America this is the John D and Catherine T MacArthur Foundation um, they award grants for all sorts of things they also have the genius grant so sometimes people think that I got the genius grant and I you know I don't really say anything <laughs> <laughs> co-production with Cartemquin uh, when a man is denied the right to live the life he believes in he has no choice but to become an outlaw Nelson Mandela um, and the question is what is an outlaw it's somebody who doesn't fit into the social structure of what you know what they're supposed to fit into um, which is I think what these guys struggle with so I'm going to show you a clip from this but before I get into that I want to show you my commercial site so when I moved here from New York I was a um, creative director at Universal Music and I let go of that job so that I could raise my child in a in a safer place and give her more even though I'm making less um, so I think you know there's a lot of decisions you have to make as a creative person in your career in in um, think about having a creative career that's sustainable you know you're constantly making decisions of how do I sustain myself and um, what direction do, like always look at the small the small what's in front of you and make those plans and look at the bigger picture I think that's that's always been something that I'm good at um, like I know what I want to do with my next 10 years and I'm sure that I'm gonna do it uh, because that's just how I am <laughs> you know what, let me let me just show you one thing these are films that I have worked on this is American Promise um, it just broadcast on POV on PBS uh, and it won at Sundance, it won at Full Frame, it was at the New York Film Festival, which is a very prestigious festival. Um, it's an eight year film, so, or it's a 13 year film and I worked on it for eight years. So if you can imagine filming uh, one, making one film over the course of 13 years, it was quite an undertaking. And really, in some ways, it's the first of its kind. Uh, so it follows two uh, young African-American middle-class boys from Brooklyn who go to a prestigious Upper East Side school in Manhattan and it's um, you know every documentary has an agenda and the agenda behind this film is black male achievement and what what do we need to give black males in particular for them to achieve because they're the most underachieving demographic in the country educationally speaking um, this is the music and Molly film all these are trailers that you can click on so you can go back to it if you're interested um, but I worked as both cinematographer and editor uh, so this this film was funded by the Ford Foundation over that whole period the Ford Foundation would give them money at that point you kind of are in um, you know you you have a relationship with the funder so they know okay this is a, a film that you're gonna need funding over this many years they'd show it to the f I'd be putting together scene selects and different things for them to look at every year um, so editing was going on throughout that process uh, this is a movie called slaying Goliath it's about an inner-city basketball team of fifth graders that travels to the AAU in Florida and this is just a short film I did um, for Mary J. Blige. Uh, so let me let me just show you. So what I was talking about earlier is when I moved from New York to Chicago, I had to figure out 
how to sell myself differently because this is a different market. I went from being in the music industry to not being in the music industry. I thought, I think I thought that I could do, do it from here. But once you leave New York, it seems like New York leaves you, you know. I mean, if you're not there, people aren't calling you, you know. So that's kind of what happened. Um, not a hunt, you know, like I still do some things here and there, but I no longer had a career. And in the end, it was actually a good thing for me. And it was a blessing because I want to make films. And in New York, you have more bills to pay. There, there, it's chaotic. There's a lot of things going on. And so you're always focused on making money, which is what working in music was about for me. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was a creative job. But in the end, as a documentary filmmaker and a filmmaker, um, it was about marketing artists. So there's, there's only so much. You keep doing it, and you keep doing it, and then you realize that you're doing the same thing over and over, right? And you're telling the same story, which is how the artist wants to look to people, which is their brand. Um, so I created a commercial company called Creative Vision Films. Um, I can, I'll show you the demo reel real quick, just so you can see the difference between my commercial work and documentary. So for all of you artists, you're all artists, uh, web visibility is very important. Social media is very important. See how I have connect to all these things? I have connect to all that on my Betty films. I have connect to all that on my, uh, for my movie. And so it's all about creating an audience that can follow you. Um, but you can see there's a, there's a big difference between what I do in documentary and what I've done commercially. Um, so there's different videos you can watch on here in the portfolio you know I try and focus on things that are uh, work that that is more marketable in Chicago so clients that I'm going to find here rather than in New York or LA where I was primarily working before um, so you can uh, you know go on the site and look at a couple of these things this is you know, the services I provide, but you can tell there's a big difference between this site and the Betty Film site, which is more about my creative vision and my films and what I want to do. And I feel like I don't need to sell myself with that site, but this I'm trying to sell, uh, I'm trying to sell a company, I'm trying to sell services. So it's very different. Um, and then I have like a roster of people that work with me. Um, so just to keep that in mind that, you know, it's great to have your own projects. And then 
you always need to figure out how to fund them and how to make a living that is sustainable. And you can do that in the creative world, you know. So that's sort of the work in progress where it's at right now. Um, and we're working on the rough cut. I'm still shooting, so. Questions? What do you guys think? So I have a question. So this is, this is very, um, I've seen iterations of this um, and sort of revamped. How much footage goes into, I mean, you're talking, we talk about years, right? But how much um, actual hours of footage do you have um, for this film? For this, I have, right now I have 350 hours of footage. Uh, American Promise was 800 hours of footage. So it's a, it's a lot to go through. I'm so tired of this demo because, <laughs> you know, there's only so much time you, you put into the demo and I'm working on the rough cut and the way we cut it, Cartemquin. We kind of make these, we're shaping scenes, shaping scenes, and so you can't just throw that into the demo. So we're doing different type of work. And so this feels sort of old and rusty to me, you know? like an old rusty nail. I'm tired of it, you know. But uh, hopefully it's good enough for funders to get a taste of what the film is about. You know, they want to see that you have scenes and not just interviews, you know. They want to see, especially PBS and POV and ITVS, Independent Lens, they want to see that you have um, a strong Verte film that really gets into the issues, you know, without just talking to professionals and making something more academic. This isn't an academic film, where as American Promise was made by academic filmmakers, so their approach was very different than mine. Can you talk a little bit about that, the difference between the approaches of the two films? Because they're obviously both about education and well, in certain ways about the, the like I think one big difference with American Promise is that they were filming themselves. So the family that you see, there's two families in the film, and that uh, New York, um, the New York Times piece is just about the filmmaker's family. And uh, I think that they, over the years, were not only shaping how they, how their son thinks about color and what they're filming, but shaping the film. And so I think there's a bias there myself. I think um, they're constantly pounding into his head, you are a black male, how does it feel? You are a black male, how does it feel? And so I think that that's actually my issue with it. I think um, that, that scene where uh, the guys are, the taxi won't pick them up, I feel like, what did you guys think of that scene? How did it read to you? Did you feel like those looked like some uh, threatening guys that a taxi wouldn't pick up? No. Because, no. The reason that taxi didn't want to drive them is because they're going to Brooklyn and they're on the Upper East Side. It has nothing to do with being black. <laughs> nothing at all, you know? So. But that's what you do when you make a film, is you try and make the pieces work, and so you're sculpting it into something. And when the directors are part of the film, they have a large part in how it's sculpted. And I think that they had an agenda that they wanted to see fulfilled. And um, the other boy's story, I think, is a lot more natural, but it's also, um, I think their access drops off at certain times because also when you think about it is there's a question of, you always have to think about what is exploitative. Um, you could say the film I'm making is exploitative because it's about poor black people. But uh, there's a fine line uh, with ethics and I think um, the executive director of Cartemquin talks about it very, he has a, um, there's a talk on uh, ethics that he gives that's really great. But the main point he makes is that you need to think about your subjects 
and you need to think about your audience and you need to come to some kind of common ground there. But you're always thinking about balancing those two things. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that I've filmed that I know that I'll never show. Because I, it's about showing what these guys are going through, but not, um, it's how I choose to do that that is going to further form opinions and stereotypes. And I'm trying to dissolve the stereotype and say, if you had all these things in your life that you were up against, if you lived in a community where you had no resources and uh, where you had no role models and you've never seen anybody in your family or community go to college and you don't know the way and you have all these, there's no opportunity, there's really no reason to even get your high school uh, degree because you can go get a job at Purdue, which is probably what you're going to end up doing anyway, or you can get a job farming. And there's a lot of historical cycles that still exist from slavery, from their parents, uh, their grandparents are were sharecroppers. And there's a lot of anger in being in that position. And um, those cycles still exist in that community. And it's like a bubble. You know, like, you can live in a bubble as a wealthy person on the Upper East Side of Manhattan or, you know, in the northern suburbs of Chicago, and you can live in a bubble in a rural community where you never leave, you never, you don't have the gas money to leave, you know. Think, just thinking about how you're going to get to school if you miss the bus and it's 30 miles away, you know. So there's, there's a lot of challenges that, that they are up against and that's really what the film is about is what you know maybe some of them aren't making the right decisions but the question is why and then it's I think there's another film that was made in Bertie County called um, If You Build It it premiered at full frame um, it was made by Patrick Creedon and it's about a design program for like the top students in the community. And it's very interesting how do two filmmakers end up in this tiny, tiny little town in this, you know, rural North Carolina. But anyway, you know, he makes this film about this NGO that comes in from San Francisco and tries to build their program. And within two years, they get pushed out of the community. And his film doesn't even show that. But to me, the question is, is how do you create change from within? So in a community like that, if, if there are not local um, community leaders or activists that are trying to help their community, you know that either the outsiders aren't going to be accepted, they're not going to um, fully understand, and they're always going to leave. They're not going to stay. And so how effective are those programs? Perhaps they're effective for the people they, for the students they served or the community, the people they serve, but beyond that, it's a drop in the bucket, I think. And I think you need programs that are sustainable, just like you need careers that are sustainable. <laughs> and it's tricky. I think, I think this is related to uh, the question of bias and perhaps also to this film that you just alluded to where you know, they get pushed out, but it's not necessarily acknowledged in the film. How do you negotiate? Um, uh, there's probably a good term for this, but your impact on the events that are happening while you're there's this scene with Vivian choosing the three boys that you're making a film about. And it struck me that that was like kind of an amazing coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps that's all it is, but I'm aware of the fact that it could be influenced by, by me. the film. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you negotiate well, those kind of things? I'll tell you this. That scene will never be in the movie because I've just put that in there because I'm trying to show PBS that I have some arc, but that is not my arc because they go that one day and never come back. Um, but it's because she promises to pick them up and doesn't pick them up. You know, like, it's not perfect. And so I can't show her as perfect, but in the span of time I have to, to develop things, I can't develop characters fully. I can't show, I can't show them at their worst point because you don't know them well enough that you're going to care about them and and feel for them so that you understand what you know why they're doing that you know there's a there's a couple really 
you know, sort of horrific fight scenes. There's a shooting. I don't know if it'll ever make it to the film. I don't know if I need to say that much. Um, what was your first question? I, I think it's just related to bias. Like, oh, talking bias about um, if you build it. He was, here's one thing too, is I've been in this community for going on six years. Patrick Creedon made that film in, like what I set out to do, he followed a program for one year and that was his slice of, you know, time, slice of life and followed his, you know, but I don't think watching his film, I don't think he captures what's really going on in Bertie. I don't think it's the purpose of his film, um, but I don't even think he knows that that program was pushed out like that. I think he just knows that they left. But I know from knowing the sort of the other spectrum of the broader population and spending more time there, kind of, I see what people are saying. I see what people think. The superintendent, there's been a big rollover of leadership in their school system, which is another one of their problems. But the next superintendent that comes in, um, he doesn't like them. He, he, he wants them out. And they're self-funded. They're not even taking funding from the school system. So um, there's definitely this idea of outsiders not being welcome. And then the question is, well, how, how am I even making this film? It's been very difficult. I've gotten kicked out of the schools at certain points. Um, I've had conflicts with different characters at certain points because of misunderstandings. Uh, so it's tricky because I come from the, you know, like I live in the north, I live in a city, I'm a white woman, you know, so, but I think the strength of making films is being able to relate to people and that's, um, that's what I love about filmmaking and that's, I don't approach them as um, Joe and Michelle who directed American Promise. I don't approach it the same way. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have an agenda. I'm just trying to see what happens. And, and a lot of these guys, nobody ever asks them how they feel about anything. You know, I know Veronica, who works at Purdue, she just, she just looked at me. I asked her, I can't remember, it was like, how do you, it was, I asked her how she felt about something in her life. And she looked at me and she's like, nobody's ever asked me that before. I don't know what to say, you know, because why would anybody ask you that, you know? Um, what else was it? I had something in my mind and I forgot it. Any other comments? What did you guys think? Good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're running a little bit long. Okay. okay. For those of you who have other stuff you have to get to, um, let's give uh, her the hand.